comrades, and welcome back to Ushanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ушанка Show. Today I have a request from one of my Patreon supporters, Jake, and he writes, Hi, Sergey. I love your videos. I started watching them a couple of months ago, and I always enjoy them. I had a topic idea for a video. I want to know what kids in the Soviet Union wanted to be when they grow up. As far as my own personal research goes, money was a very different concept in the Soviet Union, that's correct. So if you were a taxi driver, you made great money. Is this topic or this question as simple as just answering kids in the Soviet Union wanted to be a taxi driver? If you want to read the rest of the comment question from Jake, you can guys just pause the video right now. I'm not uh, gonna read the rest of his uh, comments. Although he is mentioned in one of uh, my jokes that I talk about, uh, you're gonna drink less, daddy, and that answer, no, you're gonna eat less, keto. But anyway, so let's go right to the answer about Soviet kids and what they wanted uh, to be when they grow up. Well, it just so happened that I answered that question in my book, American Diaries, 1995. So I'm gonna just read a short excerpt is that the word i think uh, uh, from my book so it's july 20th michigan of 1995 tonight we had another camp gathering by the fire pit instead of the usual silly skits or dance competitions between the villages the kids were invited to share their plans and dreams about their own future it reminded me of my soviet school when I had to write the, an essay titled What I Want to Do When I Grow Up. Soviet children dreamed of becoming cosmonauts to explore the mysteries of space, doctors to heal the sick and old, engineers to build bridges in new factories, or military officers to protect the motherland from American imperialistic aggressors. To my astonishment, children from Chicago hoods had dreams about a completely different future. Everyone here wanted to become a movie star or a famous rapper, a dancer or a basketball player to put Michael Jordan to shame or just to be a millionaire. I listened in bewilderment to the youngsters' confident voices about eventually becoming some kind of star. Dominic's boyfriend, one lucky bastard, stepped out to close tonight's presentation. He talked about going to college to become a journalist and they gave a passionate speech calling the troops to be more realistic and have reasonable goals in life. It was a great speech, but I noticed that the children weren't really interested. They all wanted to be superstars. So yeah, uh, what I remember from my early years in the Soviet school, so when I was, you know, seven, eight, nine, uh, we had all kind of very, very big dreams about becoming as I said, engineers or cosmonauts or doctors, nurses, and uh, it was never about money. It's just because what you wanted to do. And uh, since we didn't have a lot of pop culture, you know, no big sports, we didn't have a sports star making millions of rubles. So we never had like somebody would want to be movie star or soccer player, hockey player, comedian, anything like that. Uh, what I remember, well, later, you know, when you kind of grow a little bit older, for a while I even didn't think about what I want to do, but generally parents, they weren't pushing hard towards kids. It's just like when you, if you are smart, you definitely need to go and get a higher degree, so you go, need to go to college. If you're not that smart, but so they're like, okay, you just uh, finish eight years in school, then you go to trade school and finish your degree and get some kind of profession. So you'll be working at the factory or become a driver whatsoever. So I don't remember anyone would be like, I just want to be a taxi driver and make a lot of money. Nobody was saying that. Like out of my friends that I was pretty close friend uh, during high school, one guy, Valera, uh, his family was like a, I don't know how to say, it, professional military. So like his father was a military officer, his uncle, and grandfather. So that was going in the family. 
So they wanted him to be go to military school to become an officer, and that's what he did. And unfortunately, I'm planning to make a separate video on that topic. It's, we basically we finished school in 1988. He went to military college, which was prestigious college in Kiev, uh, for the air defense systems, and that means that you get deployed to like East Germany. Uh, Hungary, and that was a cool spot to serve. But then, of course, middle of the way, in 1991, Soviet Union collapsed, and suddenly he became an officer of Ukrainian army, and he was doing air defense somewhere in the middle of the woods in the western Ukraine. Totally not cool. Um, so, yeah, that was a huge disappointment for, uh, to his family. Like, his father actually served in Kuwait, Apparently, Soviet Union sold some missiles, anti-air missiles, to Kuwait back in the uh, late 80s. So he brought a lot of cool stuff from Kuwait. And I mean, cool, I'm talking like VCRs, uh, Sony Trinitron TVs, like items that you couldn't just buy in Soviet Union. But of course, there will be some kids who d decide on their own that they would like to pick some specific career. Like I recall, we had a girl in a parallel class, so I didn't home her really well. Uh, she was quite pretty, and she just wanted to be in the movies or in the theater. So you could tell, you know, when we had performances in school, she always went, like, overboard. She worked so hard. She put so much heart into performance. Like, the rest of us be like, whatever, you know. And I think she ended up uh, going to college to for the theatrical performances. And she, I mean, she didn't, came, didn't become any superstar, uh, but she was in movies and in theater. Another friend of mine, it's also like a father was a uh, Soviet army officer, mother was a doctor, uh, and I guess that was the, like a generation of doctors, so they wanted him to become a doctor. So he ended up going to the uh, medical college, and he uh, then worked at the ambulance uh, for quite a few years before he moved to the United States, and now he's in moving business. In my case, unfortunately, my parents never pushed me or encouraged me to follow my passion, which is apparently like being a writer or being a journalist. Because if you watch my channel, you're already familiar with my Dwarfs and Dragons uh, story that I wrote when I was 12, 13. I mean, that's quite early, you know, for a kid to write anything. And then I continued writing. I always kept diaries. I actually wrote a couple of short articles they published in local newspapers. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, this is probably the direction I should attempt to go but they never pushed and I just wasn't brave enough to apply uh, to the Kiev University because they had a you know like a department of journalism but for some reason I just didn't think I'm a uh, you know strong candidate to go that route so I just went you know like I knew I need to go to college but I just didn't know exactly where I want to go and where I want to go, I was just too afraid, I guess. Now, the only parents that were hardcore about pushing their children in specific directions, like for their future careers, were Jewish parents. They had, it's, I don't know what is the culture or what is it, but they had a specific professions they were going after in the Soviet Union. Since we didn't have a, you know, banking like here in America, they weren't going that direction, but a lot of, uh, they went into education, so a lot of our teachers were Jewish. And they could be, you know, teachers of Russian language, like my teacher of Russian uh, language, of English language, of physics, math. Uh, I cannot translate in English, they were all Jewish. So we had uh, quite a few Jewish teachers. So that was a popular profession that Jewish parents were pushing their children. Then doctors, a lot of those were going to be a doctor. Um, then, of course, engineers. We had actually a lot of jokes about uh, Jewish engineers. So that's the only ones I could think that they had a quite a... They watch their kids and make sure they study good and push them to specific uh, professions. And, of course, they were photographers. Like even the World War II, quite often, if you see pictures, you know, photos taken during World War II, the last name you could tell that's a Jewish photographer so you know um, they were good about uh, picking like you know professions that they didn't have to have uh, to do physical work 
Okay, so I hope, uh, Jake, I answered your question. And as a small bonus, I'm going to tell you a Soviet uh, joke about Vovachka. So Vovachka is a character similar to American jokes about little Johnny. So that's the, you know, little smartest kid. Um, so we have Vovachka, which is short form for Vladimir. It's the name Vladimir for adult. Vova. You know, it's for the kid and Vovachka, like little kid, little Vova. So we had a lot of jokes about this kid, just like little Johnny joke. So when I have one joke for you about uh, choosing future profession in Soviet school by little Vovachka. So in Soviet school in class, teacher, you know, female teacher asking kids to tell her what professions they're going to uh, choose when they grow up, what they're going to do. So we have, you know, one girl stands up, says, I would like to be a nurse. And teacher's asking, so what are you going to do as a nurse? She's like, well, I'm going to help sick, you know, and elderly and, you know, stuff like that. So then another kid says, I would like to be an engineer. And teacher's asking, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to build factories and design bridges. So then uh, little Vovachka uh, gets up and he's like, I would like to be a sexopathologist. And the teacher, like, what are you going to do? What patients are you going to treat? And Vovachka, like, uh, Mrs. Smith is, or Mrs. Ivanova in, <laughs> in Soviet school, right? It's hard to explain, but uh, let's take a look uh, outside it through the window. Do you see those two ladies on the bench eating ice cream? She's like, yeah. Well, look carefully. One of them is biting ice cream and one is licking ice cream. So which one do you think is the married woman? So Mrs. Ivanova turned red and she's like, well, I think the one that licks ice cream. And Vovach can answer her, this is not correct, Mrs. Ivanova. The lady that had the ring on her finger, that's the one is, who is married. And the patients like you I'll be treating as a sexopathologist. Well, comrades, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to like it, share with your friends, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. по фотографировать, да поснимать на видеокамеру, в итоге пришел тонны грибов. This morning we spent five hours hiking through the woods and searching for mushrooms. And this is our hole being cooked. Looking good, smells good.
Hey, by the way, cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union.